Hey guys, what's up? This is B coming to you from GNA today. So this is my ISSC MK22. What I'm going to do in this video today is I'm going to show you how to take the trigger mechanism apart in this thing. And I'll say right now, this is not the easiest thing in the world to do. There's several springs. Uh, there's several things that you have to keep in place when you're putting it all back together. So it's not the easiest thing. But I'm going to show you how to go through those steps on doing that. Uh, I spent quite a bit of yesterday just really working with it and trying to figure out where everything goes and, and whatever all the little pieces do. But I already realized that I was pretty familiar with this because of this rifle right here has nearly the identical trigger mechanism. I haven't ever taken this one completely apart, but I've pulled the trigger mechanism out of the lower. And as far as that part's concerned, it's nearly identical to this one. So I'm going to take, take this out, show you how to take it apart. And for the main reason is I'm going to do the little, the little washer mod on it where you add a little washer. Uh, between the spring of the strut that runs up to the hammer that puts a little bit more force on it. Now, the more I've looked at this and the more I've, you know, just spent some time with this, the less I'm convinced that's that's going to help much. But I am going to try it. I've seen other people saying who that it did fix their problem. So I'm going to try that. The only problem is, is I keep meaning to get a washer at the, a couple of washers at the hardware store and I just keep forgetting. So I just kind of rummage around through my house and this is the smallest one I could find. I really think it's too big, um, so I'm going to have to get some more and uh, get some smaller ones to put on there. But anyways, that's what I'm going to do is put that little washer on there to, to try to make this fire more reliably. Okay, obviously before we do anything, we'll make sure that you're empty. The okay, chamber's empty there. So all I have to do is just pull the lower off. Um, like I've said in a lot of my other videos, I just have these little H&K push pins on here, which this front one fits pretty tightly. But just pull those out. I'll put a link in the description to those things if you don't have those. That make it pretty nice. And then the lower just pulls straight off here. I've got a video showing how to take apart the uh, the bolt on this. That's in another video, so I'm not going to mess with the upper at all in this video. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take this trigger mechanism out of the lower, and we're going to take that thing apart. So there are several tools you're going to need for this. Number one, you're going to need a 4 millimeter hex head bit. And that's to take the bolt out of out of the pistol grip here that that releases the uh, trigger mechanism from the lower. Although the safety's holding holding it in place also, but you need a four millimeter hex head. And really, beside that, that's the only special, if you call it a special kind of tool that you need. You're going to need um, a, a fairly small Phillips head, and you're going to need a, a pretty thin little uh, flat head so that you can wedge the two halves of the trigger trigger mechanism apart. And then you also need something that's got a pretty rigid uh, blade on it because whenever we go to put this back together to get that the main spring uh, the, that pushes the hammer back in place, it takes a little bit of force to do that. So you need something kind of rigid to be able to do that with. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pop the little cap off here. Right down in there, that's where you're going to need that 4 millimeter hex head just for that one bolt right there. And there's that. No, there's not a washer on that thing. All right. Now we need to pull the safety off. And I, so what I'm doing is I'm making sure that this is in the fire position. That way I can reach the uh, this little screw right here, this little Phillips head screw. And also leaving it there so I'll know where to put the safety back on whenever I put this back to, together. So I know it's on, on the setting for fire. So there's just one little Phillips head screw that's got to come out right there. Okay, and I'm just going to do the rest of my work here on top of this box. I know it's not a perfect working surface, but it gets me up a little bit closer where it gets me better in the light and where you can see this better. So I'm taking out that little screw with my Phillips head. Just one little Phillips head screw. Okay, from here, this side pulls off and the other side just pulls right out. Okay, once the safety's pulled out and this, this bolt is taken out of the bottom, the trigger mechanism is free from the lower assembly, so you can pull it out now. When you pull this out, be careful though, because if you look down in there, there's a brass washer right there, and there's another one right there, and those two are not being held by anything. All they're being held on is by, is by the pressure of this lower. So when you take this out, those two little washers will be able to come free. So be careful as you take that out. What I try to do is get a little ways and then compress this like that just to hold it. And you can see these two little washers 
They come right off of there. All right, and so you're gonna take this little plate off. This little plate is what goes forward to depress the firing pin safety. So once you take this off, there's a little spring right here, and this spring on mine is just coated in grease. So those will come free. There's nothing holding those on beside the pressure of the lower. Okay, also notice on this side there's two springs. There's a spring right here that uh, pushes the magazine safety forward, and then there's this little spring right here that's the spring for your, uh, for your safety detent. So be careful of both of those things. You, you can take them out now or just leave them in there, however you want to do it. I left mine in and it was pretty successful, but um, it is possible those could, could, could get loose from you. And you can see they're kind of darker colored or yeah, they look kind of shiny in there, but they are kind of darker colored and could get lost pretty easily. So you may want to go ahead and take those out now. I'm just going to leave mine in. Okay, there's four Phillips head screws that need to come loose here to pull the two halves apart. So one here, one here, one here, and one here. So there are those four Phillips head screws that have to come out to, to be able to pull the two halves apart. Now when you, this thing is, is free to, to bring these two halves apart. Now there's several things you need to pay attention to. There's a little spring right here. And then also obviously there's the main spring that runs down to, the main spring that runs down to there pushing the, the hammer forward. So this is where you need that pretty thin little flat head because I couldn't get this apart otherwise. So what I'm going to do is just take this little flat head and then obviously just run it up in between these two halves and get these two to come apart. There we go. Okay, and I got pretty lucky because this is still in there. That little brass washer is still in there. Normally, that thing, it just barely staying in there. I'm being real careful. But most of the time, when, every time I've taken this part before, it just wants to fire that off thing like a, like a rocket. So be careful on that. So here's that little spring on the front. And there's also another little spring that I couldn't show you, but it's this little spring right here. And of course, I'll show you where all those go whenever we put this back together. So that rests in right there. Here's the spring, and here's this little strut that runs up to the hammer. Okay, here's the hammer, obviously. There's a little washer that goes on right there. This is the little nut that sits right in there that you screw. Uh, you screw this bolt into that holds it into the lower. Okay, here's your magazine safety. And obviously there's that little spring I told you about a second ago, the magazine safety spring. All right, and this will come loose here. Okay, and there's two pins <clears throat> in the actual trigger here. There's this pin that runs through here and this can pull free. There's a spring right there, and then there's a little spring right up in there. Okay, so it's going to be kind of hard to see this, but basically that's what you want to happen up inside of there is you want this piece to be up on top of this L-shaped piece. See where the little is coming right into that notch? That's what you want. And this spring right here, there's a little hole right there for it. And then there's a little hole right there for it on this end. So this spring goes in there and in here.
Okay. And so whenever you bring this around, there's this other pin that's got to go right in there through that. This pin right here that I'm moving right now, this one actually you can see um, on, yeah, it'll come through right there where you can see it poking out of the trigger mechanism. This one, it comes out this side and actually will be right inside the notch on this little L-shaped piece right here. This, this pin right here does. Okay, so let's go ahead and put everything back together now. And so I'm going to start off with my magazine release here, or my magazine safety. Put it in there. I'm going to take my spring. Okay, that's got that in there. That's all flush. I'm going to take this washer. I'm going to set it down on top of that. Take my hammer. Drop it on top of there. Okay, when you put this strut on, you need to be careful. <clears throat> There's two notches here. This notch is going to rest against the pivot of the hinge. This one's going to rest up against the, the pin that's up above there that actually puts the pressure on the actual hammer to swing it forward. So let me show you those two. Let me just take this back off. <clears throat> See, this one is going to go right up against there, against this pin right here. And then this notch is going to rest up against that pin that you see in there. Because if you get it too far, if you try to hook this one on the one that's up top, then it won't work right. you got to get it down like that. Okay, and right here is where we're going to put the washer. And like I said, I know mine is going to be way too big here, but I've seen some people saying they put it here. Adding it right there. I'm definitely going to have to get a smaller one than that. But either putting it here or putting it on the, the back side over here. I would tend to think it would be better up here because... On this washer, there's a recess in there that holds this spring in. So I would think it'd probably be better to put it up here. Because if you put it back there, it's possible that spring could slip out of there. But I don't, I don't know. Maybe if you find a uh, washer small enough to fit into that recess, I don't know. But that's what the washer mod is adding, is adding these washers right here. So this is definitely not going to work. I'll have to put that on at a later time. Okay. So now with these two pins in place with all that, like it's supposed to be there, I'm going to take, set my trigger up here, and see that pin, I'm pushing it just a little bit. It needs to be flush with this. If it's sticking past here, this will not seat down into the lower. So be careful of that. You want that pin. This pin right here, I'm just pushing it a little bit to get it flush over here on this side. Okay, putting this back on is a pain because it, it puts a lot of force on there. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in place. Actually. The way I found yesterday that actually works better is to go ahead and put it here. And
And then this is where I talked about needing something rigid. Okay, so I've already got this washer pushed down in place down there. So what I'm gonna do is take something and I'm just gonna put it right up against this, this brass washer right here. And I'm gonna pull this down and put it into place and see how that sprung off right there. It definitely has a tendency to do that. So you may have to fidget with that a little bit to get it to stay in place. Okay, and I'm being very, very careful about that because it's just barely, barely sitting in there. It's just wanting to come out really, really bad. Okay, I think I've got everything in place right there. I'm being very careful not to jostle that too much or it's going to shoot that thing off like a rocket. I'm going to take my nut and set it back into that little recess right there. Okay, let me look at this, make sure I'm not forgetting a thing. Okay, so over here now, this little spring is going to go into this place right here. And it just fits in just like what it looks like it should. Okay, it just seats right down in there. The short leg is up in there. The long leg is going to come up here. Okay, and then we have this little spring that we're going to have to put on the front side up here, but I'm going to wait till I put these together a little bit, and then right before I clamp them all the way down, I'm going to kind of push that spring up into place. So this pin right here is going to be going into the slot on this little L-shaped piece right here. And again, as I'm putting this together, I'm going to be careful of that little thing right there. All right, let's see if we can do this. Again, like I said, this is tricky all the way around okay see how that little pin came up in there this little spring is going to go on the other side of this little nipple right here it's going to be resting right here so I'm going to go ahead and take it set it right there on that side Okay, everything's looking good. I'm going to start to kind of push this together. Now, <clears throat> now I need to take this little spring. See if I can do it like this. I never tried it like this. Yeah, that worked good. So, even with it all the way pushed together, I just pushed it up into there and let it drop down into that groove right there. Okay, cock the hammer back. Push the Magazine safety in, of course, catch the hammer. Don't just let it fall fl fall freely. Everything feels pretty good. Still got both of my springs right there. That's in there. That's f well, it got pushed back a little bit, so that's not gonna work. I'm just gonna take my punch, and it's just a little bit past, so I'm just gonna push it down just a tiny little bit. And so it's recessed in there and it's recessed in there. So everything's good there. All right, from there, now I'm gonna go ahead and put in my four Phillips head screws again. Okay, and I just realized that the audio on my computer just got paused. So the audio before for, for a good while there is gonna be terrible. I'm sorry about that. Um, anyways, I guess that happens, that's frustrating. So, still putting in these four screws here. Of course, don't tighten those too much because you're putting metal screws into plastic there. Okay, next is to put our thing to push the firing pin safety. So, this spring is going to ride up in this groove right here. And the best best way I've found to do that is, especially with the grease in there, it really helps, is to get it where it's kind of angling up like that. 
Because what I need to do is I need to catch it. That spring is going to catch right on this little bent over tab right here. And then this little L-shaped piece has got to go up into this notch in that piece. And I can see that my spring is on the inside of this little bent over tab. That little plastic stud is right up in that groove. That one's up in that groove. So what I'm going to do now is take that brass washer, put it on there. That one, put it on there. And we're ready to put it back into the lower. So what I'm going to do now is take my safety, and remember I had it on fire, I'm going to put in a little Phillips head screw. And again, be sure not to over tighten this one, because again you're tightening to plastic there. Everything seems to be dropping fine. Everything feels good. So now I'm just going to take this bolt, put it back in there. And that should have it. There you go. That's how you take the trigger mechanism apart on an ISSC MK22. Um, and that's how you would do the, the washer mod, adding those washers in into that spring to help give it a little bit more force to that hammer to get it up to strike the firing pin. But the more I think about it and the, the more I've read about it, I I'm going to trim my firing pin return spring. And I really think that's going to be one of the main things because that return spring on the firing pin is, is uh, it just has too much force. And there's a, a thread that I've looked at. I think it's called FN Forum. I'll link to it. But there's a user on there named V Heinze. I think that's, I, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but he's a guy who, and it's a huge, huge thread. But uh, that guy's the one who keeps coming back and he um, is, is knowledgeable about it. He's very helpful. And um, his recommendation throughout that is to trim the firing pin return spring. That's the main thing. And uh, that, that's what I'm going to do. And I really think that should help because I, I really see that as being the problem that. The hammer, I think, is getting to the to the firing pin just fine. I think that that spring is just so stout; it's not letting not letting uh, the the force transfer from the hammer to the primer the way that it should. Um, so, anyways, there you go. That's how you take the trigger mechanism apart on ISSC MK22. Thanks for watching.